Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Bumper here, okay? Back today with a new video. I'm really excited to say that my vinegar syndrome haul has come. So as you can see, it's a fairly big box. I did put a substantial order in, but um, you know, I did save hard for it and it's only once every six months they do the sale in it, so you've got to uh, binge it a bit. So um, yeah, I'm going to try and go through each one. I'm struggling a bit for room, so I don't know how it's going to go, but um, you know, I love doing this as much as uh, you might enjoy watching it, having a good look at everything. This is a bit awkward here, but there's all the films in the packages there. Don't want them all to fall out on the floor. Okay, then we just have to jump straight in because I can't really put them into any sort of order or anything. Um, so we'll just go with this pile first. So here we go then, pile one. All right, then, then the first film out of this pile is one of the older titles, but it's really running low on stock now and it's only cheap in the sale. So that's Malibu High. Okay, so I really want to see this film. I think it's a bit of a teenage exploitation type movie. She's a, um, oh, she goes to school in the day and then she, she's like some sort of assassin or something, or just a hooker. I can't really remember um, outside of school. Yeah, she's a hit girl, yeah, so yeah, so it's like a gangster thing as well, so yeah, so it should be pretty cool, I've been looking forward to seeing this one for a while, people say it's good, it's multi-region, so if you wanted to watch it, uh, and you didn't have a region free player in the UK, you'd be alright, so yeah, so that's title number one then, Malibu High. Okay, then title number two, looks like it's got a slip cover, which it has, okay, it's a 4K, and it's Flash Eater. Okay, so this one's been out a while, but um, I haven't grabbed it before, I always try and sort of just keep an eye on the stock. But um, yeah, this time it was time to grab it on this sale, I think. Lovely uh, spine there, all embossed. Slip cover all embossed there with the writing. And then the hand as well coming through the chest. All right, so this is some sort of zombie film. I can't say I've seen it before, but I've seen a few unboxings and stuff. So uh, yeah, I think I know what to sort of expect. A Bill Hinsman film, whoever that is. So again, this is a 4K, so it does say multi-region. So that's Happy Days. And this was made in 1988. Oh yeah, I usually like to say the dates. Malibu High was made in 1978. Well, I thought it was a bit later. Now there's going to be an 80s movie, so that's interesting. Okay, flashy duh. All right, then this next one. Okay, this is one of the VS. Get it right, v VSAs. All right, this, this is a serial killer film. Ted Bundy. Okay, so I do collect these VSAs. It's not going to be possible to get them all now because some have sold out over time, but try and get as many as I can. They come in these lovely slide-down boxes. All right, you've got a nice artwork on the back of that. Looks like Patrick Bateman. And then, yeah, so I think this is from the 90s. Oh, actually, it's 2002. And it's, again, it's multi-region. It's only a Blu-ray, but you could get it in the UK if you were in um, region free. Okay, so it's um, directed by Matthew Bright, who did Freeway. So that's uh, pretty good to know. Just trying to have a look at the cast. I don't really see anyone too popular. Tom Savini's in it. So that means you might have some good special effects as well on the kills. So yeah, I haven't seen this one, but I'm looking forward to it. That's Ted Bundy. Okay, so next one, this is a 4K, lovely slip cover. It's all embossed on the writing and on the teeth. So this is Primal Rage, obviously. Um, as many people have alluded to, it looks like some sort of werewolf movie, or is that even a baboon? I'm not sure, but it's not like that at all. It's a different movie to what you expect. But yeah, it's still good. I kind of remember it from back in the day, the VHS days, but I don't know if I ever saw it. She'll bring out the beast in you, so nice artwork underneath, different to the slipcover. So this one is made in 1988, and it's 4K, so obviously it's region free. Let's have a little, quick look at the uh, info. Patrick Lowe from Slumber Party Massacre 2, <coughs> superstar. But anyway, so I look forward to that one, what's that in 4K? Primal Rage, happy days. Then this next one, okay, have you, this one's pretty good. I wasn't going to pick this up originally because um, I do like Giallo's, but um, when it comes to Vinegar Syndrome, I'd go more for the horror, but then I haven't kept saying this was really good. And the stock's getting low now. I think it's down to about 400. So that's Delirium, okay? So there's probably a couple of films with this title. I know it was a video nasty as well, but 88 board day, but that's not this one, okay? So there's the Spanish um, thing there, lovely slip cover. Got your buttons. Oh, and you've got some bush. Usually means the film's going to be crap if they sell it to you. By using those tricks. So 1972, and yeah, wicked multi region again. So can't fault the drone, always trying to bring it multi region when they can. Filmed by Renato Posselli. A vicious sex killer has been preying on pretty young women. 
leaving a trail of nude and mangled bodies. Happy days. Sounds like wholesome family viewing. So yeah, so then this one comes with good word of mouth and the stock's going fast, so that usually is a good sign. So that's delirium. Okay, this next one, I've heard mixed things about, but I wanted to get it because um, Master Chaos said it's pretty good, so uh, take his word for it. Well, your part one's pretty good anyway. It's Vacation of Terror, one and two. So you've got two films here, so more bang for your buck. Wicked slip cover on this one. This is, I think, some sort of Mexican hover. There's the back there, looks awesome. This is what I'm all about. These dodgy uh, practical effect monsters. Absolutely awesome. Take them out the slippy dippy. And then, so one was made in 89, and then the other one was made in 90. Once again, it's multi region, so knock yourselves out. So, yeah, just check. I think it's Mexican. Yeah, looming over the landscape of Mexican cinema. No family main bigger than Cadona and Galindo. Oh, right, okay, so happy day. So, one of them is directed by um, Cadona Jr., one of them is directed by Ruben Lindo. Ruben Galindo Jr., I guess. Oh, happy days. I like both of those directors. I've got to be fair. Sorry, I'm talking to the case, not the phone. So, yeah, so this should be pretty good. I didn't realise it was those two directors involved. They probably are the two main boys from Mexican horror in the 80s and the 70s. So, yeah, I'd be looking forward to that. The Cardona movies, they can't be a bit ropey, I've got to be fair. All right, this one come with good word of mouth as well. I probably would have passed up this one because, again, I don't really go for the, um, what do you want to call it, like the Rambo-style movies, but this had really good... Um, word of mouth again and the stock was going so dog tags all right so this is some sort of like rambo type rip off i guess romano scavellini is the director okay so there's the back there so yeah it's slightly outside my genre really i do go for the more horror stuff and things like that but um yeah obviously i don't mind a good action movie so there's the inside there and then this is from 1987 so <laughs> if we're saying this in the end region three all right, this is a Vietnam War movie, by the looks, yeah. Um, oh, he done Nightmare on a Damaged Brain, Romano Scavellini, did he? Or it just says Nightmare on you, maybe that's a different film. But I do recognise the name, so it probably is him who done um, Nightmare on a Damaged Brain. So, uh, yeah, happy day. So I look forward to that one, then. That's called Dog Tags. Oh, and just to say as well, that's a VSA. So that's another VSA to have. Right, that's the one first pack down. Right, we just grab this pack now, then. So here we go, pack number two. First up, then another 4K. Uh, this is a terrible word of mouth, but I love the slipcover. And obviously, at half price, I wanted to get it. Tower at Tankiller. So it's some sort of slasher film. Camp slasher, I think. Here's the back, so I'm all over this sort of uh, slightly erotic summer camp vibe. So same on the inside. So this one was made in 1986. Again, it's multi-region, but it's 4K. Uh, directed by Ken Mayer, whoever that is. Um, I don't know if this is a regional movie or what. Um, Dreamlike 1986 Slicer and Dicer. Dripping with regional slasher ambience. Yeah, so a bit of a regional movie or to a Spritz and Independent movie. So yeah, happy days. I will watch that one even though people say it's terrible because, uh, well, I like terrible movies. All right, then this next one, I didn't know much about this one and I might have passed up on it um, if I was on the tight budget, but... Um, then I use it as a witch movie, so I'm all over witch movie. So this is called The Devonsville Tanner. So I'm not totally bowled over with the slipcover. It's all embossed at all. And if you know the movie, then maybe this image is really good. Um, and then you've just got that image on the back then. And a little tagline, only evil will out the evil. So same other uh, underneath. Then this one was made in 1983. And again, it's multi-region. So you can check it out. Um, it, Nearly 300 years ago, the residents of Devonsville tortured and murdered a trio of suspected witches. However, as they burned, the condemned women swore vengeance from beyond the grave. So if you look below, it looks like it's got some good effects for it. I don't know if you can see that one now. So yeah, I look forward to checking that one out. That's the Devonsville Terror. All right then, and the next one. All right then. So this is, um, is it 4K? Yeah, I think it is. Nice side load on this wicked artwork. So this is Mark of the Devil, all right. So I know you can get a release of this over here on Blu-ray, can you? I think I've 88 films, maybe, or it could be Arrow, I'm not sure. Um, I think I'm mixing that with Miller and Stone Women, though, so it probably is 88. Lovely artwork on the back. So this is like some sort of 70s uh, witchcraft movie again, I think. So wicked there. <laughs> Got your boy there. On Flesh of Frankenstein. On shoot if I'm not being oh, Udo Kia. I nearly forgot his name then. That'd been embarrassing. Uh, so yeah, happy days. All of you will burn in hell. And you got this. So this looks like a sort of hammer type horror. So I love those sort of movies, obviously. 
looks a bit like Wish, Witchfinder General. So yes, we're made in 1970. Uh, this one's region lock, it says A, but it is a 4K, so I don't know, man, you'd have to just do your own research on that. They should be um, region free, really, but they're not always. All right then, so Mark of the Devil, absolutely awesome with the little Kia. So just to say again, you've got a slip, and then you've got a nice side loading slip as well. He says, <clears throat> and it all makes up one tidy little package for Mark of the Devil. Alright, then this is a good one. This is a bit like Blade of the Dark with the, um, I don't know what you want to call it, the, oh, I'll just show it to you, the one that opens this way. <clears throat> so this is The Prophecy 1, 2 and 3 with Christopher Walken. So I can't say I've seen any of these films. So a bit of a bargain really when it's 50% off and you're getting three, three, getting three movies. <clears throat> Here's the back there. So take this off. I don't know if you want a quick closer look. You've probably seen it a million times. And you lift it off, the image changes. It's a bit like having a blade in the dark. It looks like you're pulling a knife up from under a hand. And if you pull this one, it's just like his head's turning hit the bats or something. But I've never seen the film, so I don't know how it correlates. But then that looks awesome there, the side. It's all embossed. It looks like maybe like a Bible or something on a shelf. So yeah, wicked slip cover. Really feel the quality on this bad boy. Plain Jane, the actual image, but it feels really uh, top quality. And there's everyone then, because it's got loads of discs in here. It's got three films, so I don't know how many discs. It's got one, two, three. It looks like it's got, it looks like it's a four disc set. It says Region A again, even though they're 4K. So, again, I don't know. It seems weird that all their Blu rays are region free and they're 4Ks a lot. Don't make any sense to me. But yeah, so this has got Christopher Walken in, um, Eli, Elias Costius as well from Crash. Uh, so I see if anything different in the second one or the third one, but I'm not sure. But Christopher Walken's in them all anyway. So like I said, you get three movies here, tons of extras is all your extras there. Like I'm not gonna be able to read them, but you can see how many there is. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to tucking into this one. This is the problem now, like there's knowing what to watch first, but I got a good mind. And what I want do want to watch, which might surprise people, but we'll get there when we get there. The prophecy then, three movies set, absolutely banging. Oh, right, and then this is a good one as well. This one was running out of stock fast. I uh, didn't realise it was a big box. I thought it was just a slip cover. But again, like the other one, the Mexican Horrors, this is a Mexican Gothic collection. The films of Carlos Enrique Taboda. Can't say I've ever heard of him, but I'm always like, I love Mexican. I love Korean, Mexican, Japanese, Chinese, just whatever, man. Just give it to me because it's just sort of got so much weird folklore and it's just sort of, it's just crazy, like. They haven't got the same limitations from the film studios as like American movies and whatever. So, like I've said, lovely side loader there. Wicked artwork. And another slip cover then. You know, the drone no way to do it, that's no date. These are your three films here, I'm guessing. The Peanut, Dark of the Night, Poison for Fairies. And they don't feel that thick actually, the box, when you get into it for three films. I don't know how many discs are in here. But they made in 1976 and 1986, so two of them must have been made in the same year. Oh no, one was made in 19... yeah, two in 1975, one in 1986. Bewitched Children, Revenge Seeking Spirits and Murderous Thieves. Criminally Unknown, outside of Mexico. Most influential works collected here for the first time on Blu-ray. Happy days. So there you are, sorry I'm waffling a bit to myself. So again, I love these sets where you just get random like three movies and you just don't know what to expect. It's the best part of it, really. Like, so you've got a booklet in this one as well, so that's really good. It's got all sorts going on in it. I don't know if it's got a table of contents at the start, just to let you know. No, not really, just an introduction. Okay then, so yeah, that's a real good release. I can't wait to tuck into that one. I don't think I get any of the Euros watched the way this is going. There we are then. Awesome. And then one more in here. Okay, this is a bit of a sleazy one. A wicked slipcover on here. I love these sort of slipcovers. <laughs> With the scantily clad women, the animated ones. Amazon Jail 1 and 2. So I hear the first one's good. And the second one's not so great. But like I said, look at the slip on that. Like, absolutely awesome. Well, I think it's awesome. Anyway, in the back, awesome as well. Bang tidy. I love women in power movies, like I don't know why, but they're just cooler than like men who are bloody fighting for their lives. It's like something about a movie when it's a woman or a group of women and they fight back. So this is 1982 and 1987. So Amazon Jail and Amazon Jail 2. 
it says region lock so be careful if you buy this one and yeah so i can't i can't uh talk much about the films because i haven't seen them but they're just exploit exploitation movies from back in the day women prison movies so yeah there we are then amazon jail one and two all right so that's another package down so we'll get this one out now okay so first one up on you this is one that i was a bit forced to buy because the um stock was going down fast and i didn't want to lose out because the slick cover it is nice um but it's like a 1940s black and white horror it's called the cat creeps which i got it against 1940s black and white horror man i'd love 1930s horrors but um you know like i said again with vinegar syndrome sometimes i gotta be selective but this time because i saved up all my cash i could be a bit looser so yeah in its eyes a murderous secret so yeah i'm sure this is black and white yeah, so this is region locked, so be careful if you go out and buy it and you haven't got a region free player, but as you can see, it's black and white. So um, it's universal, so it should be good, because like, they're responsible for all the black and white monster movies, obviously. So yeah, this looks really good. So yeah, I look forward to checking that one out at some point. <clears throat> Here we go, then. This looks like a crazy ninja film. I love a bit of uh, crazy karate from Vinegar Syndrome, Ninja in the Claws of the CIA. So a bit of a mad ass slip cover there. This is a VSA as well, so happy days. <laughs> Nice, slip from on the back, nice buttons. All right, so this was made in 1981. Same artwork there. Again, this is region lock, so a lot of these are coming up lock now. We were on a good roll earlier. And yeah, so I didn't show these earlier, but I don't suppose you get your number on top of the VSAs just to say there's one of the limited editions. So yeah, I think the stock was going down a little bit. It wasn't flying out, but I thought I'd better grab it than wait any longer. So Ninja Claws in the CIA. Okay, so this one, I've seen some uh, trailers for this, like, or clips on YouTube, and the special effects look terrible, like, but I still want to check it out. It's called Frostb Frostbite, Wrath of the Wendingo. So um, the slipcover's cool, like, you've got this creature thing over the top of this cabin, and then you've got this on the back then. So, yeah, like I said, I've seen some quick trailers of this. This was definitely regional, or, you know, you think you'd find this in one of their homegrown box sets. Highly ambitious indie horror gem which inexplicably remained nearly unreleased for some local, from local screenings for the best part of a decade in the late 80s. So you can see the special effects. It looks awesome. Like, Well, I think you might be able to see them anyway. So yeah, so this is going to be some sort of stop motion extravaganza, I think. Either stop motion or really cheesy computer effects. 1995, so it might be really cheesy computer effects. There we are then, Frostbite, huh? or a bit of both. All right then, so this is a 4K I was after for a while. It wasn't really selling out or anything, but I do want to see this film. I like a bit of sleaze, as you know, sleazy exploitation. Massage Parlour Murders. So I've never seen this one, even though they yeah, did release it on Blu-ray, Vinegar Syndrome, but I was, it was in the early days when I wasn't collecting, I just never got around to getting it. So the slipcover's wicked, it's all embossed. So this is 1973, um, multi-region. Is it 4K? Yeah, it's 4K, so you'd expect that. A fever dream of New York lens, 70s exploitation cinema. Non-stop orgy of murder, mayhem, gratuitous tits and ass, grimy Manhattan locals, bizarre plot twists, and a left field, highly ambitious car chase. Yeah, so sounds awesome. You know what you're getting for when you see those screenshots. You know, I mean, you know if it's your sort of movie or not. Did I show the back? It's wicked on the back there. So yeah, so that's what I would want the kids to catch me watching, Massage Pile of Murders. Oh, finally, we got a little bit of Cat 3 nonsense going on. Love me some Cat 3. This is by Wilson Yip. Oh, I don't star uh, Anthony Wong, but <laughs> they can all star Anthony Wong. Bio Zombie. Oh, I look forward to this bad boy. I'm noticing here a bit of a crease on the slip cover. I'm not too bothered, really, like, but, um, you know, tut tut, vinegar syndrome, usually wicked. I like that side. I don't need the pink and green, so I just put it that way in my collection so you can see the crease. And then, so this is multi region, so you're all right. And it's from 1988, so, you know, you expect the special effects to be a little bit better and whatever. Uh, it's definitely a gore fest. I don't think it will be um, CGI'd, i got to be fair, like. But the guy who directed Wilson Yippy done it, man. So that's pretty cool. Oh, I don't know, so it's got quite a lot of names attached to it from Chinese cinema, so I look forward to that, Bio Zombie. Did I show the back? Awesome. Alright, this was one that I bought because the stock was running low. I think you can get it over here on 101 on separate discs. But this is a box set of Black Cat 1 and 2. So I don't really know what this is. I think it's Chinese. It could be Japanese though. I think it's like an action assassin hit woman type movie. So 
<laughs> I don't know who drew this on the back. Who thought it was, oh, I'd commission it. But Jesus Christ, my six-year-old drew better than that. But still, whatevs. And then, so there's another VSA. It's a bit thicker, I think, than the other ones. Which is a bit of a pain in the ass when you want to put them in your collection. Maybe you'll have more to match. But maybe it's just the colours making it look thicker. So there's a limited edition number on the top. Oops, got a booklet in. That's why it's uh, thicker. Sweet. All right, so this one's region locked, so you'd have to be careful if you wanted to buy it. But like I said, I think you can get them from 101 over here. One's made in 91, one's made in 92. Um, yeah, so explosive action, bloody gunfights and bone-breaking martial arts. All colliding as girls with guns. Double feature. Yeah, sounds like my sort of thing. Friday night, isn't it? 11 o'clock at night, everyone's in bed. Got a couple of beers left and a bit of pizza going on. And then it's got a booklet as well, so it's like a landscape one instead of a portrait. Uh, it's just, oh no it's not, I was going to say it's just images from the film, but no, that's got some white in as well. So yeah, that's the double collection of um, Black Cat. Oh, I've done so one more in this pack now. So this is a 4K, I think, yeah. This is an 80 slasher, I'd never heard of it, but it looks like a sort of film I would definitely have rented back in the day. Night Screams. So yeah, like I said, it's got a bit of a um, teenage kind of feel to it. Like these characters, they look a little bit like they belong in Saved by the Bell. So that's always a good sign for me. All right, so there's the back. And then tonight their cries will fall on dead ears. So this is from 1987. It's multi-region, but it's 4K. So that's what you'd expect. Um, let's have a little bit of a write-up on it. Inventive kills incorporated on electrified hot tubs. Bodies crushed under cars, death by poisonous fumes, and faces shoved into hamburger grills. Happy days. So yeah, well, it gives that bit away on the front actually with the hamburger grill. So a bit of a barbecue kill, can't fault that. So that's the 80 slash of them night screams. All right, so here's the next pack now. So this one, this is... Um, Glad I read up a bit on this one because I might have ignored it otherwise. This is on the partner label. There's only one partner label, the Vinegar Syndrome Do. Well, two now because they've taken on Shudder. Well, I missed the slip covers on both their releases and I already had the sadness anyway, so I haven't started with those. But the other one is CIP, Canadian International Pictures, and they do some tidy films. So if you think you don't bother with the partner labels on Vinegar Syndrome enough, have a little look at that. Filter with the Canadian International Pictures and you get some good stuff. So this is the Amateur of All Curse, okay? So get the first three Amateur of All Films, you know, like released by the studio or wherever you get them or you might have the 88 4k or the vinegar syndrome release of the first one and then there's like a box set then in america vinegar syndrome bought them out in a box set and over here i can't see them by here anyway they're probably at the back by there another company bought them out over here i can't remember what they're called but they were four movies most people would assume it was parts four five six and seven but it wasn't it was parts four six seven and eight it was missing five i don't know why well licensing or something but anyway so this is number five so this is the one i'm missing so i've slid this in now and i basically got all the amateur movies so that was pretty uh cool i kind of feel like i sort of killed two birds with one stone there and i got the limited edition variant slip cover as well so i was definitely chuffed with that look at the back of this bad boy so yeah so like i said this is number number five not that they had got a lot of continuing continue continuity anyway after number three you know some of them don't even happen in the house do they just haunted items i think this might be haunted items when it looks a bit different uh oh, of course it looks a bit different because it's a canadian pictures when i'm chatting uh, so it's made in 1990 anyway so yeah um yeah so after purchasing a property in amateurville new york debbie in, and her husband invite three of their closest friends to help renovate immediately an ease is in the air so one of the most overlooked entries in any major horror franchise, Yam de Volkers deviates from series formula to surprise and amusing and settling effect. So maybe this was the first one that became one of the haunted item ones. I can't think of number four. I've seen them all, but um, with franchises with that many movies, they all just get wind up bloody, you know, you don't know which one's which. All right, so this is a nice video, Nasty. Um, I think you can get a Blu-ray over here from uh, 88 or 101, but I think it's long out of print. I think it's on the 88 Slasher Classics. But um, anyway, so I got the Vinegar Syndrome one, Mother's Day. All right, so this is pretty cool. Backward, backward slasher, uh, evil matriarch type horror from the 80s thing there. So like I said, it's a video nasty. Not, not category A, I don't think, uh, or um, in the first 39, but uh, somewhere down the list. So 1980, uh, multi-region if you wanted to get it. 
And um, yeah, I, I wouldn't get too much into this. I think most people who are into Vinegar Syndrome or who would be watching these this video would know about uh, trauma and the movies they done. So Mother's Day probably needs no introduction in this sort of circle. All right, so this is some more Cat 3, Boom Ting. All right, again, it hasn't got Anthony Wong in, but it's a sequel to an Anthony Wong movie, Untold Story. So a wicked little bit of embossing on the eyes just to give you that extra bit of uh, cool looking touch light. And it's all embossed on the back then as well with this crazy ass woman with a sword. Uh, it's a VSA, so ooh, not a bad number, 795, probably the lowest I got. And then that's the head, is, I only just noticed that head's in a fridge or a cupboard with all this other stuff. Ooh, it's quite tight to pull out, she said. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so 1998, so again, probably have good special effects. It's a good um, Cat 3 movie, like Dream Home, that didn't come out until about 2012. So um, yeah, the, some of the later ones are really good. So this has got the same person in who's in Boyle's on me and the Demon's Baby, so happy days, and someone from Itchy the Killer. Um, oh yeah, it's got a supporting, a supporting performance from the King of Cat 3 films himself, Anthony Wong. So Anthony Wong is in it for a quick bit. Happy days, I can't wait to watch this one. Then this is going near the top of the list. Oh, I guess so that's Untold Story 2, and if you haven't seen the first one, obviously do yourself a favour and watch it. All right, now this one I pre-ordered because if you pre-order something in the flash sale a couple of months before, you get your order shipped a little bit quicker and it was pretty good this time. Probably only waited two weeks, which is not bad really. So anyway, the one I pre-ordered because it's the only one I wanted really desperately. I thought it might sell out because Cynthia Rothrock movies always do. China O'Brien. So I know Eureka bought this out and I should have bought the Eureka one to support the British companies. However, it came to light that Eureka put both the films on one disc. Now, the first thing to say is that that's not a quality issue. Um, a 4K disc is 100 gigabyte, so you're talking 50 gigabyte of film, so that's plenty for two movies from the 80s, cheapy 90 minute martial art movies. So I'm not saying there's a loss in quality by them being put on one disc, but I don't know, I just wanted them on two discs. I don't know, it might sound strange to some people, or people might get it, but that's just the way it is, really. So we could slip cover underneath. So I did like the Eureka one mine because they had the traditional. Part two cover where he's all white and she stood there and she's got the red right in. That's the one I always remember. I had that poster in my bedroom because the guy in the video shop gave it to me like when the film got any one worth advertising in the window anymore or whatever. China O'Brien one and two. So then underneath then. I think I'm going to open this one up, I think, because I want to see if there's any alternative artwork underneath to see if I can see if that artwork's on there. So it's you know, it's, it's, it's region A again. I just don't get it with these 4Ks. Um, Again, I don't need to talk too much about this. Looks like they were both made in 1990, so they must have rushed the sequel out. Um, I think this is Cynthia Rothbach's um, first American movies. Um, definitely her first headline in um movie. Uh, always the same, trying to open. I'm just wasting time, really. Here we go. So yeah, this will definitely be an early watch for me as well because um, I've been looking forward to watching these movies again. So yeah, so there we are. Then there's the disc there. So China O'Brien, China O'Brien 2, and then you've got the Blu-rays as well. So a four disc set, so that's Happy Days. So you get four discs, is it reversible art? It is reversible art, I don't think it's the one I was hoping for, mind, but hey ho. Just more of the same, to be honest. It just looks a bit different, more newly commissioned, but still cool. So yeah, I look forward to tucking into these. This could be one of those things, you know, where the film is better off left in the memory. Because I used to love these when I was a kid, especially number two. I used to rent it all the time. So I hope they live up to my um, memories. Oh, I gotta be fair, and I do enjoy them because I'd be a bit gutted otherwise. But yeah, so it's a really nice set. I'm really happy with that one. So I pre-ordered that. So paid for whack for it rather than added any sale price. But what can you do? And there is a booklet in here as well. See if it's got a table of contents first. No, I haven't. But it's got a bit of a mixture of pictures I'm writing, so you can have a little bit of a read. Cynthia Roth Roth. Cynthia Roth Roth stuff goes like crazy on Minica Syndrome. I probably pressed a lot of copies of this, so it might not have seemed to go down so fast. But some of the other ones are just completely sold out already. Like, uh, So there we are then. So that's China O'Brien. Absolutely wicked. So this next one's a video nasty. I thought at first by waiting for a sale I might have missed out on this because it sold quite fast early doors but then obviously it slowed right down so that's the black room. I think it's a Cat 3 video nasty. I don't know for sure. It could be number two. Definitely not number one. So that's there. 
I don't think people really love this movie. I've got to be fair, because I haven't seen the buy it. I've seen it all over YouTube. But then I'm on a lot of reviews for it, so it usually means that uh, <laughs> most people didn't like it or they didn't get around to watching it. It was made in 1981. It's multi-region, so if you want to get your video nasty on, you're okay in the country where it all began. And then there you are. So lovely slip cover on that one, as you come to expect. So that's the black room. All right, now this is one of their new releases. I've got to be honest, I'm a bit ashamed to admit this, but by the end of the sale, I was chasing points because they had a few slip covers I wanted. And at first, I thought with all the money I was going to spend, it was going to be easy. I was going to be able to get the slip covers, no problem. But it wasn't, it was still a bit stingy with the points, which is mad because I get three time multipliers because I've spent over the limit over the years, but it's still wasn't enough. I got a couple of slip covers, but not the ones I wanted. But um, I really had to like try and get a couple more points to get one. So I bought this to push it over the edge because it was new. Full price, so you had a good amount of points for it. So anyway, without any more waffle, Bob Cheney is the instructor. So everyone thought this was going to be Jim Carter. It was all over the uh, YouTube stations, you know, the channels. Everyone was thinking it was going to be Jim Carter because of the clues. And they dropped this and no one had ever heard of it. And they just like, oh, right, okay, the instructor. But it looks pretty cool. Like, I, you know, I loved the, after the horror, my favourite vinegar syndrome. Well, it might even be more favourite than horror because I watch that all the time anyway. But I love <laughs> movies with shit karate and tits in it's got tits and shit karate you tell me those two give me that description of a movie and i am in so this should have uh, lots of shit karate and hopefully there's going to be some tits in it as well so happy days <coughs> i am all over it it's got a little sticker there like as if it was in the video shop or whatever to tell you what sort of genre it was like you wouldn't be able to tell from the thing so yeah this looks cool as poo like if you look at the back like i just don't know what's going on like it looks cheap as cheap as chips but I don't know, directed by Dom Bendel, starring Bob Cheney. You can't say I've ever heard of Bob Cheney. A regionally shot action extravaganza was the only film made by Dom Bendel and lead actor Bob Cheney. In the vein of films like Champagne and Bullets and Death Promise, the instructor is a low-budget tour de force that will leave you stunned. All right then, big words, big promises, we'll see. All right then, so that's it then, the instructor. We'll have a look at that bad boy. All right, last one in this set. Now, this is hilarious. I probably wouldn't have bought this film. It's way back in their back catalogue. But the stock was running, and then someone told me what it was about. So I had to get it. This is called Play Dead. And you might not believe me when I see this, but this is a film like Home Alone, where the dog is Kevin McAllister. He plays tricks on people, I think, trying to break into his house. That's why it's called Play Dead. So, yeah, I just got to see this now. Like, now someone said that. So, 1982, multi-region, if you want to watch it. So it's no problem. Uh, you can see the dog on the back there, like. And let's just see if there's any sort of little tip, little sort of hints to what goes on. A low-key Texas supernatural thriller uh, made by Peter Whitman. Play Dead mixes Southern melodrama, smattering of TNA, alongside requisite bloodshed and occult tinged twists. So I know it doesn't say much about a dog setting traps on people, but that's what I've been told is all about. So happy days, Play Dead. All right then, so I have to start putting my from here now because we're running out of the room. So here's another set here. Yeah. So the first one we're going to pull out the here then. All right, so this is an old film in the back catalogue, but they just pressed a, slip, a new slip cover just for this sale. So I have to get them when they do that. Like, and I didn't have the film, so that's always good news. Although you could buy the slip cover on its own if you did. This is called Sweet Sugar. So this looks like another exploitation um, type of woman revenge movie. So yeah, you go on the back there with all the chains and the woman. So yeah, so there's a wicked slip cover on this, all embossed. Like this is like a new limited edition one. And underneath then you've got this old school like 70s looking poster. So it's from 72. It is multi-region if you um wanted to check it out. Don't even see the stills here. It looks like your typical uh, 70s exploitation movie. Uh, the beautiful Phyllis Davis stars a sugar, a fun-loving nympho traveller who's entrapped by a corrupt cop and sent to a female prison camp hidden deep in the tropical jungles of South America. All <laughs> right, okay, because <laughs> that's what happens. But yeah, I can't wait to watch that. And so it's going to be a jungle exploitation film and she's wielded in a machete. Uh, so that's always a good sign. All right, so that one sounds good. So again, this is one of the older ones. I didn't realise this, but... Um, this is a, this is type this title is different to what I would associate it with. So this is called Beyond the Door Three, um, but it's actually a sequel. So um, oh, is it? They might be called Beyond the Door, but I will brought them out. But they got is they got there's two other films in this anyway in this series, but they all got weird different names or whatever because they're Italian. And you know what it's like. So this looks wicked. See the witch by there. So uh, yeah, so this is multi-region. 
1989. Um, yeah, so Beyond the Door 3, originally known as Amok Train. So that's what I mean, they don't have any relation these Beyond the Door films, but there's three of them in there. Um, and I got the one uh, from Arrow. I could, I've got the other one though. I, I, I don't know. I should have researched it first. I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head. Oh, so this is another old one. I bought this one. I hope like I get a slip cover. There's six slip covers I wanted in the media club, all limited ones. Like you could only get through that way. And I went and bought the films first, like without seeing if I had enough points, just thinking I was going to piss it because it just seemed easier before. But I don't know what happened. Maybe they're just more stingy. But anyway, the suckling. So I didn't get the slip cover for this in the end, and I think it went. Um, so I was gutted really because the old titles with the new slips are the ones that look the coolest. But anyway, I am seeing this film. It looks like some sort of crazy practical effects alien type thing so that's wicked that's right up my street uh 1989 multi-region offbeat gleefully violent monster horror comedy from one-time director francis terry gratuitous score nonchalant tna and sly side help with a social commentary so yeah happy days more tits and ass can't fold it the second okay on to the next one again this is another one that um i wanted to get a slip cover for I managed to get three slip covers out of six. I might have got this one. I can't remember. It's terrible, isn't it? But I don't know. I don't know if I did because it's a bit, bit plain Jane. But this film's supposed to be good anyway. It's called Prey. Uh, this is off from their back catalogue. Again, this is really running low on stock now. So this is why I thought I'd better grab it. It looks pretty cool. If you look at the back there, you've got this guy here, whatever's going on. It's multi-region, 1977. Um, a science fiction film. Oh, it's by Norman J. Warren. So he done like Happy Birthday to Me. Um, is the other one called Satan's Slave so yeah, I've seen a couple of his movies so that'll be alright then so I look forward to watching that one I might have a slip for it in here I don't know pray oh well, this is a 4k this has got a lovely thick slip on it it feels like a book this one does fair play this is Blood Sucking Freaks so people tell me this is good I've never seen it um, it's all embossed by there it's got that sort of carnival 1920s or whatever the carnival days were in America on the back like feels like you're playing a cuphead game and then, yeah, I tell you, as mad how thick that is, you'd have to feel this one to bloody believe it. You could knock someone out with it. All right, so this is 1976, multi-region, but it is 4K. So I think people who watch this channel probably know more about this one than I do. Um, I think it's quite popular to some people to go hounds, um, but I haven't seen it. So, yeah, I look forward to watching that one. That is Blood Sucking Freaks. Okay, then this one, Wicked um, Lenticular Slip on this one. Um, again, this is quite a popular one, but I've never seen it. Way Big Grannies. So you can see that clear as day, can you? That's really good. And on the back then, well, there she is. <laughs> After 10 points, when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> All right. And then, oh, Wicked Underneath. Look at that, that's cool. Look at that work. So, yeah, so this was made in uh, 1988. It's multi-region, even though it's only a Blu-ray, so you'll be all right if you want to watch it. Uh, again, I don't think I need to say too much about this one, but um, this is from Belgium. Oh, right, it's Belgium. The special effects are wicked. Look at that there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but looks cool as. So, um, yeah, I thought it might have been something like Australian. It had that sort of feel about it, but um, Belgium, I don't know. I've only ever seen one film from Belgium. The treatment, that's good. Like a Silence of the Lambs film, really messed up. But uh, yeah, there we are. Then Ray Big Granny's looking forward to that one. So here's an older title now. I think you can get this one over here, but I'm not sure. I think it's called Prozzy in this country. But in America, I think it's called Olivia. So this was just selling out. It's a film I've always wanted to see. Um, you know, their back catalog's going to go soon, like on Vinegar Syndrome. So they're getting rid of a load of stuff. So I just have to grab it. So this is 1981. It's multi-region. Again, another exploitation woman gets revenge film, I suppose. Yeah, so when she was a kid, she witnessed the horrifying murder of a prostitute mother at the hands of Angry John. Um, yeah, so maybe she goes after revenge. I don't want to read too much of it because I don't like reading the whole blurb. So I like to go in blind to a certain extent. So yeah, Wicked Olivia, I think it's called Prozzy in other places, but I could be wrong. Maybe that's a different film altogether. Let me know in the comments if you know. All right, then this is another one I was going to try and get the slip cover for, but I don't think I could have got it. Um, I don't think I got it out of the three I got. Um, you can get this one over here, I think, on Arrow or something, but Blood Hook. All right, so I've never seen this. It might be a video nasty. I don't think it is, but it could be. Um, in 1986, multi-region, if you want to watch it. Uh, special effects of Mopey as I've got to be fair. Blood looks bloody bright orange. But, um, yeah, so this looks like a bit of a regional film. But like I said, I swear it's eight over here. Um, 
on a release, but I bought it because I thought I was going to get a slipcover. And even though the slipcover is playing Jane, that would be amazing with this because I know like it's a popular cult movie, so it would be nice to have the full release. But um, when the sale was over, I went back in to have a look and I think they had gone. Maybe they'll come back again. Who knows? Oh, I don't so that's another package down. All right, so we've got two to go. Jesus Christ. Here's the next one. All right, so we'll have a look at this one. So again, this was a slipcover one. So like I said, it was six of them. I think I've got a slipcover for this one. So I think the three I didn't get were Prey, Blood Hook, and um, what was the other one? And the Suckling. I didn't get those three, but there was three I got. And this is one of them. So this is Spookies. Again, you can get this on 101 over here, but I've never bought it. Um, I've heard it's horrendous, but it's got all some special effects in. Um, but yeah, I'll be to get it on Vinegar Syndrome now, and i got a slip cover in there somewhere, so that'll make it look extra awesome. So, I mean, it looks like my kind of film. It looks absolutely amazing when you look at the grabs on the back. It's multi-region, 1985, so yeah, it's just full of, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, practical effects. Um, it's distributed by Vipco, so that's cool, like, as the old uh, UK company, uh, run by Michael Lee, I think. Yeah, this is directed by... Thomas Duran and Brendan Faulkner. I can't say I like, really use much about it, but that's spookies anyway. I put that to one side because like I said, I should have a slip cover for that somewhere in the box. All right then, so I've actually got three Christmas movies in here, believe it or not. <laughs> I thought no in Vinegar Syndrome, I won't get them until December. I'm not joking. Uh, so this is, I didn't get a slip cover for this when it sold out ages ago. I think it's a video nasty, don't open till Christmas. I think it's a UK slasher. It's multi-region from 1984. That looks really gruesome, I've got to be fair. And it's the flick, the flick blade or the flick knife, whatever you want to call it. I hate that weapon, that's savage. Um, so yeah, so like I said, it might be a um, video nasty. I'm pretty sure it's a British movie, but there's the other one. The Severin have released them. Um, Love, Hug and Kisses or whatever. I get both confused for some reason. I didn't know that one's not even a Christmas movie. But anyway, so that's Don't Open Till Christmas. Alright, so remember I was saying earlier about the partner labels, Canadian International Pictures. I've got a couple more releases in here from them. This is one of them. Again, this is a Christmas movie. So this is the second Christmas movie I bought. Now, I love this sort of subgenre. These are weird ass kids' films that were on TV in like the 80s and the 90s, but they've never been released since. But they like, I don't know if you've ever seen The Peanut Butter Solution. Uh, like, they, they are a little bit, um, you know, not like a scary or like erotic or anything stupid like that. But I don't know, he's got an extra edge to him to make him like, all right for adults as well, like they messed up sort of thing. So there's the back there, it looks awesome. So this is called The Christmas Martian anyway. So I mean, I haven't got a clue. Um, this is from 1971, it's only on for 65 minutes. A delightful Christmas fantasy, fun for everyone from outer space. So you can see that, it's not very good colours really for the camera. But anyway, so yeah, so this is a whack night kids film anyway. From I didn't realize it was as early as 71. I thought it might have been from the 18s, but hey, can't wait to see what go on in that one. Christmas Martian. And then here's another one then from that company, Canadian International Pictures. I've been after this one for ages. I nearly bought it off film treasures a few times, but um before Vinegar Syndrome, they would do a sale of their own stuff. Then a month later do a sale of their partner label stuff, but this time it was all on sale. So I got this for half price. So after this for a while, exploitation. Bad Boy, East End Hustle. So this is definitely my kind of movie. That artwork that sells me every time that does. That gritty sort of 70s New York street kind of uh, vibe. And then you've got the girls here on the back here then. And I love these movies, like I always say, The Women Against the Impossible Odds, after all the slime balls. So this is a 4K. And then on the top it says, Cindy was a hooker trapped in the East End Hustle. Uh, 1976 so yeah just like i said exploitation if you've seen films like thriller and candy snatchers and things like that then you won't be able to see the back very well i did so yeah i've had my eye on this one this one's been out about a year i've been gagging to get it so i finally got it east end hustle okay got a standard release here it was just running out of stock everyone tells me it's good i've always ignored it but i finally picked the uh, hit the button, or what was I going to say, bit the button, bit my lip, whatever, Nightmare Sisters. All right then, so I think it's got Lena Quigley in, um, directed by David de Cattoos, sexy horror comedy, non-stop thrill ride of outrageous 80s trash, starring three of the biggest names in Scream Queen history. So were they there? Yeah, Lena, Lena Quigley, Brink Stevens and Michelle Bauer. Oh yeah, I'll be doing like Michelle Bauer. Whoop, Nightmare Sister, I hear this is good, some sort of witchcraft movie, is it? I'm not really sure. It was like some sort of punk rocky type movie. Um, so I'll look at that one. 
another one from the old catalogs got lena quigley in again it's a double bill of lena quigley movies so i'll be uh overdosing on her murder weapon and deadly embrace again stock was going down vinegar syndrome is going to say it's being discontinued so i have to grab it really like number 138 this one is on their collection got some good special effect stuff by there so that's always a winner uh 1989 i think both films were made in the same year directed by the same guy same guy who done our other one we just said david the so they've got three of his movies to jump into uh lena quigley Karen Russell, Michelle Bauer again. So yeah, so happy days then. So just two gritty, I wouldn't really say massively exploitational, but just, you know, standard 80s thrillers, skin flick thrillers. Oh, I don't know if the artwork about this is laughable like we've seen our other one earlier. This one's even worse. I don't know what they were thinking, but then I heard the film's really good. So that's usually the thing in it. Like, you know, if it looks good, it's tarted up and it's not as good as it was. But if it looks crap, it's, it's better. But anyway, so this is a gun for Jennifer. This is from the 90s. I mean, yeah, look at that artwork. It's absolutely terrible. The back just as bloody bad. Like, I just don't know who commissioned that. But um, this is a Blu-ray. It's one of the VSAs. Um, and it's multi-region. And it's from 1997. So, again, it's got some gross side images on the back. Um, a young woman from Ohio fleeing an abusive marriage arrives in New York. And she's attacked and nearly raped by a pair of thugs. Shot almost entirely on location in Manhattan in the mid-90s, providing a snapshot of a gritty and grimy New York, long disappeared. Oh yeah, that's what I like, see? So a brutal and bloody female revenge, anthem in the tradition of Miss 45 and I spit on your grave, culminating in a balls-to-the-wall shootout to rival anything seen in the Wild Bunch. A sensation at the 97 Fantasia Film Festival. Can't wait to watch this one. I've heard it's really good. And I'm glad, because I would never would have bought it with this artwork, so you know, I'm glad someone... Uh, Put me onto it. Oh, right, so this is a stroke of luck. This is a 4K. Would never expect this movie in 4K, but as coincidence goes, I got every Asylum, Asylum, every Amicus um, anthology movie they ever done, except for one. The one I haven't got, Doctor Terrors, House of Horrors. Even though it takes place on a train, so I don't know what that's all about. But artwork's amazing. It's got that old 60s British. Um, gothic horror feel that I'm all about. Like I said, I got all the other ones from Amicus now: Torture Garden, House of Drip Blood, Asylum, uh, Vault of Horror, uh, Tales from the Crypt, Tales of Witness Madness. Even though that's not officially Amicus, um, Beyond the Grave. So I got them all, but um, this was the one I didn't have. So when they, you know, I had to go, I paid full price for this one. It wasn't in the sale, but I had to have it. So it's it's locked originally, which cracks me up when it's a British movie from 1965. It's got all your boys in it, like um, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing. Uh, obviously, it's produced by Milton, the main man, Sabotsky. I think things in this as well. Um, Kiva Sutherland's old man, Donald Sutherland. I think it's Donald Sutherland. I could be wrong. Oh, uh, well, whatever. Anyway, but um, yeah, Dr. Terrace Hayes of Horrors. Uh, I look forward to watching this one as well, because I even, it, cause it's the one I haven't got. It's the one I've least seen as well, so... I'll definitely be checking out late soon. All right, then. Well, I hate to say it, it's a sad time, but we're done for the last batch. Here we go. Let's see what we've got. All right, then. So, this is what I've seen earlier. I know in my mind what I want to watch first. This is the film. Now, it's not a big, ballsy release, ballsy, big, ballsy release. Um, but there's this interesting fact about this. This movie was made in. Well, it says 2021 on the back of here because Vinegar Syndrome finished an old movie. I swear it was made in the 80s and never finished for whatever reason. And then Vinegar Syndrome uh, finished it off and that's New York Ninja. So this is in the vein of like Revenge of the Ninja and all that caper. The Shokasugi movies, the Canon movies. So I can't wait to watch this. Like I said, um, because Vinegar Syndrome uh, sort of like, like filmed an ending or whatever, like whatever it was missing. But I think it still kept the old school vibe. No screen grabs on the back, so it's hard to tell the look. But yeah. Well, it's got Lena Quigley in there, so yeah, so it's been to have oh, Don the Dragon Wilson is the guy in it. I didn't realise that. I watched a bit of this before I streamed it. I turned it off. It was so good. I wanted to wait for this. But I didn't realise the guy was Don the Dragon Wilson. He's hopeless, but he's lovable. Like, I just, I can watch him just about. So yeah, New York Ninja, wicked. So here's one from the back catalogue that's very close to selling out. May have gone now. It looks like a bit of a comedy horror. Flash eating mothers. A bit shiny on the old uh, cellophane, this one. So it's from 1988, it's multi-region, so if you wanted to check it out, there's some screen grabs there. <clears throat> so it's got a, it's a, an absurd and tongue-in-cheek mix of zombie film and Cronenberg-esque body horror. 
director video 80s cult classic non-stop barrage of over-the-top splatter courtesy of special effects wizard carl sovinson of charles play and tremors all right then yeah so that looks really good then again master chaos um said this was good so um that's why i grabbed it definitely gonna check it out Here's another one I got a slip cover for. I remember I got a slip cover for this one. It's called Grey Robbers. So remember earlier we were talking about Mexican horror. So there's a guy called Ruben Galindo Jr. And he directed a trilogy of Mexican horror movies. Well, he'd done more. He'd done Demon Rat as well. But he'd done three that sort of go together as a loose trilogy. Uh, Don't Panic, Grey Robbers. And I do I should have looked before I come on because I never remember the name of the other one. But it's a similar thing to this, like, you know, graveyard type horror. Um, so I got Don't Panic with a media club slip. So I got this one with a media club slip now. As well, and hopefully I can get the other one. So that's happy day. So they look good in the collection. So it's multi-region if you wanted to get it. Um, it's like a Mexican slasher movie. These kids, like grave robbers, they go down deep into this tomb and they pick up this sword and it like releases this ancient evil like or not a sword, it's like a an axe thing like that. Like they take it out of the tomb and he goes after them, obviously. It's pretty good. It's better than Don't Panic. I will say that. So I should have a slip cover for that in here somewhere. Right, so this was one that was running out of stock. I probably wouldn't have ever picked it up. But again, um, you hear me mention Master Chaos a lot on this thing. You know what it's like with YouTube. You always got your go-tos. If I want to know about video nasties, I'll go see Rock God 2004 or Mondo Chalavec. Like, if I want to know about Criterion, I'll go and watch Elliot Cohen. But if I want to know about Vinegar Syndrome, Master Chaos. Loads of people do Vinegar Syndrome streams, and they're all awesome. But Master Chaos, I'm telling you now, I don't care what anyone says, he's seen them all. He's, he's seen way more than, and he knows the ones that are coming as well. Like if they come out, he's like, oh yeah, I know about that film. I've seen that film where most people don't. So um, I do have similar tastes with him as well. I follow him on the box and we do review a lot of films, the same thing, same score. So I'm waffling, the Immortalizer. All right, so it's Region A. This, this is a, um, a rip off of Reanimator, I think. So that'll be cool. It's from 1989. Um, don't reckon anybody in it, I've got to be honest, but... Um, a quick thing, it revels in bloody surgical sequences, um, loads of nudity and a mad doctor story. Uh, plays like a 1930s poverty row horror feature, updated for the 80s exploitation market. Oh, I don't see I look forward to that one, the immortalizer. Oh, I don't see we come to the end now. So this is another one the Master Chaos recommended. He's also a film director, Master Chaos. You can find him on YouTube, but he made the film The Exorcists with Doug Bradley recently, and he made a Headless Horseman film. He works for Asylum. So, yeah, he's a cool guy. I love his YouTube channel, but we don't do a lot because you don't get the reward for He puts a lot of hard work in, but you don't get it back from YouTube. So, anyway, he said this is really good Wonder Women. I would never have picked this up without a slip otherwise. So, I don't think this is like an um, adult film. I think it's only rated like PG or whatever, but it's like a good adventure film, he said, from 1973. Really good fun. So, multi-region. Um, if you wanted to... Check it out there. So a bit like um oh god, what's it called? Kill Pussy Cat, is it? I don't know, that's an old film in there. There's ones in there, there's a couple like this. I can't think what it's called off the top of my head though. Um so martial arts madness, dangerous chases, insult heavy dialogue, sci-fi twists, and a lot more nudity and violence than this very misleading PG rating would imply. So yeah, so it's a PG, but it says it's got nudity in it, so that'd be weird to see. So uh yeah. That's Wonder Women. Look forward to checking that out sometime. This one, again, I would have passed over it, but it was running out of stock. I think it was less than 100, and I don't want to be chasing these films on eBay at the later date and paying double when they're bloody seven or eight quid in the sale. So, Hellmaster. So, I said I would have passed over this, but when I read about it, it's from 1992, so it's a bit later. It's multi-region. Just let me check the bags. I think someone's in this, or it's directed by someone that maybe wanted to buy. Oh, John Saxon's in it. That's it, yeah. Directed by Douglas Schultz. A Detroit shot regional horror movie at the decline of director video era. How Master was the first feature from cult filmmaker Douglas Schultz, who'd done Dark Fields as well. Gothic horror, creature filled narrative trappings, and intensely colorful Argento inspired visuals. All right, then, so that sounds all right then. Uh, it's got some new footage added as well on here, it says, from the cable version. So, uh, yeah, that should be good. All right then, so that's How Master. Alright then, so this is what I've been waiting an age to get. Again, it's running out of stock. Um, never going to get a slipcover for it. Killer doll movie. I've always wanted to see it. This might be the second one I watch because I've heard good things. Dolly Dearest. So I love the artwork. love the picture on there. You might be able to get this on a UK release. It's probably long sold out. Those I don't see it anywhere. So I've seen the doll a few times like in the special effects. They're cool. It has like 
Um, I've seen them on like YouTube reviews and whatever. So 1991. So I like that year again because special effects sort of not super ropey but not good either. Um, so you know I don't think I need to read much about this. Do I? So um, oh, it's got Rick Torn in it. So he's always hilarious. He's funny and uh, Freddie got fingered for dudes. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to watching that. That's top of the list. Dolly Dearest. Can't wait for that one. And then we've got two more left. This one. This was the one I, I was going to use to, when I was going to talk about Master Chaos because he said this is a classic. This is, he says there's like four or five films on Vinegar Syndrome that are absolute classics. And this is one of the classes of that. So that's why I grabbed it. It's called Dominique. It looks like a giallo, but I don't know if it is definitely a giallo or what. Um, but it looks cool anyway with the rope and the pinks. I love the pinks. I always get them with that colour. 1978. It's multi-region if you wanted to check it out. It's running low on stock. Might not even have any left now, but... Um, it says it's a suspenseful, suspenseful supernatural thriller from the guy who directed Logan's Run, Michael Anderson. Um, sumptuously photographed by Oscar winner Ted Moore. Um, yeah, so some sort of haunted house horror by the looks of it, rather than a giallo, but it kind of looks like. So that's Dominique. All right then, and then the very last one, you'd probably be pleased to know, you've probably got a sore bum, but this is my last Christmas movie. Um, I remember I said I had three, so this is by that Canadian International Pictures again. So Wicked Films, check them out, honestly, on Vinegar Syndrome. Find yourself something different to watch. The Dog Who Stopped the War. So I think this is like a bit of an ongoing um, snowball fight in a town, like, and the kids won't let it go or whatever. And I don't know, maybe some sort of dog has to come to the rescue, like, and let her know there's more to life. Um, it's got like a French title there, so maybe it's French-Canadian or something. But that's the signal for that company there. Um, CIP, Canadian International Pictures. So we get slip cover on this. Feels heavy, so I think it might be two discs in here. 40th anniversary special edition, 1984. I don't know if you can see that. So yeah, I'll pull this out at Christmas along with that Christmas Martian and see if my kids will enjoy it. I don't know if they will. I probably will though. And then um, don't open until Christmas. I'll keep for myself in the night. So that's wicked. So I've got my Christmas viewing already sorted. Okay, that's the dog who stopped the war. And then that's it then. So now I just got a couple of slip covers. So the first one I said I had was for Spookies. Let's put that back so we can sit. And it all went tits up. I dropped the slip cover on the floor, so sorry about that. So I find them bloody difficult to open because they're so thick. So there we are then. So there's the Spookies slip cover. So I should have shown it to you first. Here's the slip cover for the Spookies. So it's the media club. It's got the thing on the back. And then you've got the face there. So it's slightly different. The back's different, but the front's the same. Uh, so I like you've got a bit of boobage going on. So that's that one. And then another one I got, then, like I said, was this one for Grave Robbers by Ruben Galindo Jr. So I got this one and Don't Panic now. So they look lovely together. There's the labels there. Um, I just need to wait for the third one there. I can't think for the life of me what the third one's called, but I find it on the site easy enough. So that fits nicely in there then. And then you've got that there. So there we are. I probably would have preferred the suckling or... Um, what was the other ones I said? I can't remember what the other ones were now. I'll pray. But um, I went for this one just to match up with the other one. And then the other one is for a film I already got. I won't go and get in there because this video's gone on long enough. But absolutely wicked. Everyone knows this is one of my favourites. The Candy Snatch as well. I seen they had this slip cover. I was like, oh boy, I had to get that one first thing I ordered. So yeah, you can see it's the Media Club one. Got your gold labels. I got the film on my shelf. So I'll be putting that in there soon. So yeah, so that's an amazing slip cover for the Candy Snatchers. All right, then, thank you all for watching. I hope you made it to the end. Um, but uh, anyway, I really appreciate it. So my name's Bumper, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.